so Lou Lamorella. It's a horrible, horrible idea what Lou Lamorella has done. Why would you play, why would you start a game like with 15 skaters? See, this is, it's surprising from Lou. Because you look, and Lou builds strong teams every year. Yeah, he does. And great GM. Yeah. Great GM. Yeah, he builds a great system down there he's, in New Jersey. He's built Stanley Cup champions so many times. And then just changes the whole system of things by picking up this sniper scorer on a team that's never been about scoring. And way overpays him, in my opinion. Like, Kovalchuk deserves to get paid a lot, but not that much that it means you can only skate 15 guys a game. <laughs> Skating 15 guys a game, that sounds like a beer league in a small town. It is, it's a beer it's league, and with two like... guys got caught in traffic, and one guy <laughs> has a daughter's recital. So yeah, so you're just, yeah, so we're just playing with 15 guys, so yeah. Mike and Peter are going to have to double shift tonight. <laughs> yeah, you know? you're going to have to double shift. This is NHL for Pete's sake. Come on. Come on. You you're playing with that. 15 guys. The bench looks a little light blue. Yeah, come on, eh? I hope Ilya was worth it when everybody on the team is dead tired. You know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, at least Ilya can't complain that he's not getting enough playing time. Yeah, he, he better get playing time for that kind of money. I'll put him out there every shift if I'm paying him that much. I would put him up. Just leave him on the ice. Just change just, the other four skaters around, around him. Around. Ilya's got to get points. Come on. Ilya's going to get points. He has to. He's not leaving the ice until he gets two goals. Oh, man. It was the same thing the Blackhawks did, right? Like, they, they handcuffed themselves with the salary cap thing. Yeah, they that was ridiculous. Cup. That's fantastic. Then they got to get rid of, like, three quarters of the team. And, like, not like just little guys that had barely anything to do with it. Like, key role I know, guys. like, Andrew Ladd going to what? Atlanta, Atlanta right? Atlanta with Dustin And then Bufflin. Bufflin also to Atlanta. Two huge role players yeah. for the Chicago Blackhawks. You Those lose, are the guys they need. You lose Niemi. You lose uh, Versteeg. Versteeg was another one who's okay. good. Like, yeah, 20 for goals sure. Score. Yeah. Do you think Niemi is a big loss to Chicago, or do you think he was just a product of the system? Niemi came up big in certain situations, but quite honestly, was not the reason they won the Stanley Cup. I think they could have done it with a couple of other goalies in there. Matty Niemi is not a stellar, elite-level goaltender. By no means is Niemi. Oh, by no means. Like, like, arbitration wanted to give him, like, what, 2.3 million? Something like that. You know, a little bit more than I think he's worth. Definitely uh, not deserving of that much money. Well, you talk about arbitration. What the arbitrator awarded Clark MacArthur there? Why Atlanta got rid of him? That was ridiculous. A guy who's like never gotten more than 20 points in a year, and he get, he had that one good year where it was like what 37, 37 points was all he had. But if you look at Clark MacArthur this year, he he's looks started, like he's working. He's he looks great. like he's earning. Maybe the arbitrator do something we didn't. Maybe he's living up to his arbitration. Maybe the arbitration or arbitrator is a psychic and knew what Clark MacArthur was going to be worth this season. That worked out great for the Leafs though. I mean like they say he's worth like 2.6 or whatever. Or 3. Yeah 4. I think it was even in th 3 millions. And like Atlanta's not going to pay that. No absolutely not. So the not. Leafs get him for only 1.1 and he turns into like I'm going to score goals all season long. It's going to be me and Phil Kessel or yeah. lead the Leafs back to glory. Like That's going to be a good line. Of all the guys the Leafs picked up in the offseason, you know, who would have thought Clark MacArthur would be the big acquisition? Well, I wouldn't have put it at Clark MacArthur as top on that list. I think, like, the strongest point of the Toronto Maple Leafs this season is their defense, oh, by their far. De their defense their is defense one of the best units stacked. in the league. Oh, by far. Fanoff and Kamasarek and Boschman. Uh, Caberle, Luke Shen. Like, like seriously. They have a great... Jaguar is playing great. Jaguar is playing awesome. Gustafsson, he's going to come into his own. He's a we'll, monster. we'll have to see about that. He, he is a uh, monster, so to I'm speak. I'm a Leaf fan. i got to believe Gustafsson is, is going to make it. Yeah, you'd better believe that. Well, your team doesn't have to worry about goaltending. No. Canucks don't have to worry about goaltending at all. Luongo is a uh, proven goaltender. Looking great this season so far. Oh, yeah. Looking pretty good. Like those last couple goals he let in against the Kings, there's nothing he could really do about those ones. Yeah, and yes. like I think now that they took the like he's not the captain anymore. Yeah. Doesn't really have to like worry about all that extra stuff because you gotta admit that was kind of a dumb idea. Oh, not a great idea by the Canucks. I'm not quite which. Uh, at first, when they named Luongo the captain, I was excited because I'm a Canucks fan. I like Luongo. He's good for the team. He's a good player. But I was like, at first, naming him captain, yeah, it's a great idea. He's the best player on the team. He's 
he's a leader vocal guy but like the one thing I didn't like they kind of jumped on him as soon as he starts to critique the players he, as a goalie he can't really critique the players you know what I mean because yeah. like it's difficult because it just sounds like him complaining yeah right like this is why goalies shouldn't be captains and I'm a huge goalie fan right absolutely but they should not be captains no I think you're right like Vancouver was the only team that didn't really have a leader that tried it and I think they proved that goalies can be captains especially like in the playoffs oh yeah it's, it's it's a weird system but like there are a lot of goalies who are leaders like you look at them like yeah they're they're veterans in the clubhouse yeah guys look to them yeah. for leadership but as a captain no for sure that captain needs to have that vocal presence he needs to be able to like call the team out as the have as themselves as one of those people they call out yeah you got to hold yourself accountable like, that. like if a captain's like scott stevens yeah when he stands up in the locker room he's like we got to play harder and we got to play faster and we got to check harder and all this makes sense he's out there with you but when the goalie starts doing it players are like well we're the ones out there hustling our butts off you're in net yeah so it's not the same situation exactly like you got to be able to relate to your fellow players and as a goalie it's harder to relate like that yeah and not nothing against roberto i mean like he's great Oh yeah, but great as goalie. A, the captain yeah. thing was just a weird, weird idea, and it just didn't work. You know, I was proud to see uh, Henrik Sedin really step up. You don't have a lot of those foreign players in the captain role. You don't on some teams, but I'm not saying that's it's it's more of an exception to have a uh, uh, overseas player as a captain yeah. than to say like a Canadian or an American player, right? Just because of the whole language thing, right? But. Uh, I was really uh, happy to see Henrik Sedin step up into that leadership role, take on the captaincy for the Canucks. And uh, did you see that ceremony at all? That was a pretty nice ceremony. It was a very nice ceremony. The first Canuck uh, ever, first Canuck captain ever. Stan Smeal. Uh, was it? Was it Smeal? Uh, I don't think it was Smeal. It was uh, another captain, the first captain. The fact that they had a lot of the past captains there. Yeah, was, they did. Nice. But the first captain ever, I uh, forget his name, but he handed him the jersey in a very ceremonious way. That was nice. Yeah, donning that jersey is very, very symbolic. It's very nice, right, the, for the whole Oh, yeah. 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 You know, sooner or later, Daniel's going to put on that jersey and be like, they'd never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'd never know. Oh, and no, anybody no. on the team wouldn't know. Like, they've talked to players on the team, and they're just like, yeah, Half the yeah guys on the team. I can't really tell them apart. Like, how do you play hockey with these guys, live with these guys 24-7 and not tell them apart. I couldn't. Uh, You're just like I, Henrik's half an inch taller. Well, that really helps. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. He poofs his hair up a little bit day, today. Like, and how, about one you, how about one of you shaves and the other one keeps the goatee? That would look so funny. I like the beard. Like not, the beard? not a lot of players keep the beard all season. Like, maybe a little bit of Chris Draper or something like that or Kirk Mulby. Darren Helm, he looks good with the beard. Darren Helm? Doesn't he keep the beard all year? What, he's, he can barely grow anything. He's What? He's a kid. Darren Helm? Darren Helm. I'm thinking of some... No, I'm pretty... Who are you thinking of? It's not Darren Helm. Dan Cleary. Dan Cleary. He grows Again, a good beard. no. What? He doesn't have a beard? Are you talking Dan Boyle? No, on the Detroit Red Wings. Detroit Red Wings. Dan Cleary? You don't know Cleary? Yeah, but an all-year beard? Doesn't, like, Draper? Maybe it's... Somebody on the... Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi just... That's the 5 o'clock shadow yeah. all year long. He's just... Yeah. His beard doesn't grow. It maxes out at a 5 o'clock shadow. <laughs> uh, it just makes him look even more bad. Yeah, he's a bad dude. Don't mess with me. No, you don't mess with Bertuzzi. Oh, uh, you got Steve Moore. To... <laughs> oh. Yeah, Steve Moore is now a verb. Yeah. You just got moored. You got moored. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a boat or something. Oh, the fact that uh, his brother is, is in the NHL there. Yeah, I see him floating around occasionally in yeah. highlights packages here and there. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. What about Edmonton? That is surprising. Edmonton with that breakout season this year. With uh, Abby Bull has been playing great. He, he's been playing great. The young guys are starting to actually play. Everly and PRV and yeah, PRV's playing good and Hall. Yeah, I was very impressed. Of course, Everly's goal there to start off the season. Did you see that interview where they were all joking around? Oh, I didn't see that one. That was so funny. It was the funniest thing in the world. 
they TSN interviewed him. Am I allowed to say TSN on this uh, broadcast? Yeah, you can say TSN. <laughs> TSN, they showed this uh, highlights clip. I just saw it online later where jo or, uh, Eberle was asked, <clears throat> so how does your teammates feel about you scoring such a pretty goal? And he's just like, yeah, I don't know. They're kind of criticizing me about it. I don't think I'm going to score any more pretty goals the rest of the season. I'm just going to stick to garbage and junk goals. And then they interviewed uh, Horkoff, who was on the two-on-one -on -one with him. And he's just like, yeah, I couldn't believe this young punk didn't pass. Me, a veteran of the team, the captain, why didn't he pass to me? Who does this young punk think he is? And like, and then they got this other interview, and Jordan Eberle was feeling remorseful, and they had like all these interviews, and they put it together. And at first, I'm just like, what? Are they really criticizing for scoring a pretty goal? Like, it looked so believable. I couldn't believe it. But uh, at the end, Jordan Everly just kind of gives a laugh, and you could tell the whole thing was a joke. But That's good. that it was, was a loose locker room. Yeah, it's good to keep it's that kind of guys in there. Yeah. yeah. They need some sort of good news at Edmonton. <laughs> they do. Like, they do. Well, Dustin Penner, I saw, scored a goal again the other day. He was looking good. Good boy. Yeah, good wink, good boy. Good boy there. Yeah. So we need we need more Mennonites in the NHL. Yeah, like Eric Fair doing good in Washington. Yeah, yeah, we need we need more of this more, Mennonite flavor. Yes, I think so. I think it's only a matter of time before you know I get called up. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was actually talking to Canucks the other day. They wanted to maybe try me out with the Moose for a while before Still I get called up. Yeah, I think it'd be nice. Yeah, now yeah. that I'm living in Winnipeg, yeah, you know, it's just a short drive. Well, yeah, exactly. Just they head out. Don't have to fly you out. Well, yeah, exactly. We'll uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, you know, take I'm my talents. I'm asking for a trade to Tampa. <laughs> You're asking for a trade to Tampa? They're looking good. Well, you just want to go down to, to Florida. I just want to hang out in Florida. That's yeah. Jeff Dick, I'm taking my talents to South Beach. I'm taking my talents to South Beach. <laughs> Jeff great. Dick is taking his talents. Mark, the Jeff Dick is taking his talents <laughs> to South Beach. He is going to go play for the Lightning because they need it. I'll be the healthy scratch every night if it means I can just hang out in South Florida. <laughs> You could go play for the devil, sit on the bench. <laughs> I'm I'll sure the guy they can't afford to put in. I'm sure you could take a salary that they can afford. I'll take whatever salary. Oh, I'll take pay. whatever salary they give me. I'll just sit on the bench so that the rosters look a little bit better. Oh man, it's not like I'm helping anybody get a breather either. Like nope. 20 seconds on the ice, I'm like, oh. We have a full lineup. Jeff Dick and Cody Bueller. We signed both of them for combined one hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> I can't believe it. We signed them so cheap. You'll, we'll see why we came that cheap though, when we get on the ice. <laughs> well, no, we don't get on the ice. We just sit on the bench to make their lineup look full. Just to make it look full. Yeah, well, exactly. Just to scare the other players. Just be like, wow, that guy's really fat. <laughs> I really hope I don't hit him. He has a good goatee. They both have nice goatees. Their bench. That, that's, good that's, facial that hair. That shows good hockey talent right there. It's true. There is something to say about a good playoff beard. I will say that. Yeah. Those guys who can grow good playoff beards, they're usually better playoff performers. My one exception oh. being Sidney Crosby oh, and what about uh, Jonathan Taves. Okay, Taves and Kane are exceptions. Kane, what about Kane's playoff mullet? That was disgusting. <laughs> Who grows a playoff mullet? I don't know, man. That, well, when you can't grow the beard, you got to do something. It's true. It's true. As opposed to Taves' beard that just comes in like it was more like, like it was more like a vampire <laughs> or something. <laughs> that looks so gross. It was more like a Jonathan Taves playoff chops. It's just like the sideburns come in and everything else is like, we're done. We're done. The mustache, I'm not even going to show up. The mustache was done before he even started. Then you got some guys, like uh, Villy Lano. Yeah. Like Philly there. That came in, he just looked like a beast on that Scotty side. Scotty Hartnell. Oh, the best. One of the best beards. I love that man's beard. Hartnell is a hairy monster. Yes, he time. is. Oh. His hair is like flowing out the back like a retro Yarmor Yager. You remember when uh, a few years ago Commodore when he played for the, the Flames and he yeah. had that red afro going on? Yeah. That was I actually up. saw this picture. Did you have you ever seen that picture of Commodore lying in bed with like a hundred dollar bills? Yeah, yeah, I saw oh, wow. that today. Like who does this? Hockey like, players with who, too much money. Who took the pictures? <laughs> I don't want I think that's know. like his like roommate? I don't know. It's like, all right, Derek Broussard, I'm going to need you to come in here with a camera. I'm going <laughs> to lay naked in this bed of money. He wasn't naked. He had boxers on. It doesn't help the situation.